Welcome to So Easy, my dear sewing friends. So today our project is going to look much like this one. So here we have a sleeve, a cuff, a hoodie lined, and also high-low hem. And it's all made from a lovely French terry. This was actually a gift from a sewing friend, so it's extra, extra special. So as I mentioned, it's going to look very much like this, but not quite, so I have prepared a sketch for us, so that way we can understand the concept and sort of have a vision in our head. And of course, I have prepared a choice of fabrics as well. So without any further ado, let's go and dive in. As you know, the entire premise of So Easy series on my channel is about taking bits of knowledge that we already have and then putting them together and creating something useful, beautiful, creative for our own sewing and for our own wardrobe. So that's exactly what we're doing today. And it might seem like a garment that you've never seen on my channel, but in fact, all of the puzzle pieces that we're going to be using today, we already done time and time again. So the body is just a relaxed fit sweatshirt or a sweater or a jumper, or you can even take a t-shirt and modify that. Now I will be using a sweater adjustment from my Knit Bodice Block series. It was in first episode, but you can of course do a drop shoulder. You can use a pattern that you already have and you know that you love it. You can draft a dolman sleeve. You can draft a grown on sleeve. And I know I don't have to tell you this and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but all of these tutorials you can find on my channel, including the tutorial for the hood. And from here, I actually want to make this hoodie into a two-tone design design. So here I have some cotton French terry, some ribbing, some other fabrics, and as you can tell, <laughs> I'm really into combining these earth tones, browns and beiges. I really want to play with these color combinations. So the idea is to color block the sleeve and the hem of the hoodie. Now I know I've pulled quite a lot of fabrics here from my fabric stash, but <laughs> I'm immediately drawn to the combination of these two. It might seem a little bit like plain vanilla, but that's the point and nothing wrong with plain vanilla. But I think that the combination of these two is gonna go so well with a lot of things that I have in my wardrobe and I really want that functionality. And I already have a beautiful floral hoodie, so this is going to be great. But you can of course do a combination of a variety of things, just you know, let your creativity loose. And before we move forward onto the patterns, let me tell you where I got this fabric because so, so many of you asked me where I got this French terry when I did my video about three methods of sewing pants. So I'm letting you know, this French terry was from Serge Fabric Shop. These two were as well. Not sponsored at all. As you know, if it was, I would let you know. But that's where I got it. That was my first time shopping at that shop. So I will leave the link for you guys in the info box below. Go check them out and see what you like. So now let's go ahead and talk about the pattern. So as I mentioned for the bodice and the sleeve, I'm going to be using a knit bodice block adjustment into a sweater. Now for the hood, I already have a pattern. I just need to make sure that I adjust that pattern for the neckline. And after that, I just have to figure out how I want to color block those sleeves and the hem and that's about it. So let's take a look. First, let's go ahead and start with the bodice. Here's the front, here's the back. So let's go ahead and do a couple of little adjustments. First, I want to widen the neckline just by about a quarter of an inch, both on the front and on the back. Now I would like to create a slightly larger armhole, so I'm going to lower it by about half an inch. And also because here I do have a little curve that goes over the hip, I actually want to create a straight side seam. So I'm going to lower my armhole just by about half an inch or so, half an inch is right over here. And then I'm going to extend it by, let's see, there we go, I can just take a straight line. Let's just give myself a little bit of room over here. So a straight line like this, and that is gonna give me about a quarter of an inch extra here on the side seam. So lower the armhole here, extended the side seam. I'm going to fold it in half and copy that onto my back pattern piece so that way they match and align. And now I just have to slightly adjust my armholes and extend them to that side seam and I'll repeat both for the front and the back. And here 
on the bottom, I think that's exactly where my pattern is going to end because the hem is going to be in a different color. So I'm going to leave it like that for right now. So for the sleeve here, I also want to do just a couple very simple adjustments. And first, this sleeve was perfect for the blue armhole for the original one. But obviously, we have lowered the armhole and then extended it. So here, what I also want to do is, because it's a hoodie and it's a relaxed fit, I think I'm going to lower the cap height just by about half an inch would be right over here. And then I will extend it by half an inch. Here. I'm also going to do exactly the same thing on the other side as well. And now I'm going to take my adjusted pattern. This is the front and this also is the front of the sleeve. I'm going to layer the armhole with the sleeve and I'm just going to outline this little dip of the curve right over here. And this is where my notch is gonna go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back pattern piece as well. All right, we're almost there. Now I want to create the new cap of the sleeve. There we go. And I will again measure the sleeve and compare it against the armhole just to make sure that this is big enough for that. So I measured and I need about half an inch extra in my sleeve in total. So I'm going to do a, a very simple thing over here. Instead of redrafting everything and doing the, all those steps, I'm just going to do a slash and spread and I'm going to do quarter of an inch here and quarter of an inch here, which will give me half an inch right in the middle of the sleeve. There we go. And the final adjustment that I want to do is I actually want to create a straight sleeve because I want a little bit of gathers here when it goes into a cuff. So from this new point of the sleeve, I'm actually going to take a straight line down all the way to the hem. And then I'm going to extend the hem to meet this line. Bod is done, sleeve is done. Now let's talk about the hood. I will be doing a three-piece hood. Now a tutorial about drafting and sewing a three-piece hood is coming very, very soon. But for right now, if you'd like, you can use the other two hood tutorials that I already have on the channel. And now I just need to make sure that this line right over here fits into my neckline. Now this one is a little bit longer than my neckline, but you know what? This actually plays into my advantage because I want to create a little crisscross overlap at the center front of my hoodie. So this is perfect. So now I just have to create that color block curved hem. And here I was thinking for a while and looking at it. And I also decided to extend the bodice by about two inches. Now the curved hem itself is pretty straightforward and it will overlap at the side seam so it's a little bit longer than each of the front or back pattern pieces. And here I also wanted to add that of course, this is how I go about pattern drafting and pattern adjustments, but there are so, so many other ways and techniques. So as always, use what's right for you and what works for you. And for the sleeve, I decided to split the colors at about six inches above the hem. All right, pattern done, so let's cut it out.
So now I know that I only have the sleeves and the bodice cut out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to base the whole sleeve together right away. And then I'm going to start by assembling the side seams, the shoulder seams, and putting in the sleeve because I need to know how this is going to look before I've cut all of the pattern pieces because if the sleeve looks a little bit disproportionate, I can still try to fix that. And with that, I might need to adjust the hem as well. So of course, I'm not cutting it just yet because I need to know how it actually plays out in real life, not just on the paper in a sketch. So the body is sort of done, so I'm going to baste in the sleeve and uh, it's going to be a make it or break it moment. So, okay, <laughs> I was debating if to show it to you or not because for right now it doesn't look impressive or it doesn't look like it's going to turn out nice, but I have the vision in my head. So far, I like where it goes. I do have to adjust the length over here because I did lengthen it by two inches and I shouldn't have. <laughs> So I might be, uh, I might need to cut it off, but I think the proportions are good and obviously the sleeve is not gonna go like this. It's actually going to have a cuff. So let's get back to sewing. Let's put it all together and uh, I hope it works out. A quick reminder here that all of the techniques that you see, like for example, sewing in the sleeve and adding the cuff, you will find on my channel and in the info box right underneath this video. You know, I'm just about to finish these sleeves and <laughs> I'm happy to tell you that it's shaping up, it really is. I know it doesn't look like much just yet or it doesn't look like the final idea that I was going for, but I think we will get there. And you know, um, this whole situation kind of got me thinking about how often do we actually give up on a project halfway through, midway, you know, before it even has a chance to shape up and all because it doesn't really look like the final idea just yet. And I've definitely been there, I've been there, but I can also tell you that if we don't take it till the finish line, we will never know if it ever had a chance to become what we had initially envisioned. So, Sometimes it does take a little bit of um, persistence to take all that, I would say, fear and uh, disbelief and maybe even anxiety and just sort of like <laughs> shove them in the corner, tell them to stay there. So if you need a little bit of a pep talk, I'm here to tell you that you know, sometimes it's worth pushing through even if it doesn't come out at the end because otherwise we will never know, right? And if you do have, a, you know, a story or personal experience that you would like to share with us about, you know, pushing through in a project when halfway through it didn't look as enticing or it didn't look believable, then let us know in the comments below. I know a lot of people could, you know, really use um, a different perspective perhaps or somebody else also experiencing the same thing. So if you'd like to share, let us know in the comments. I would love to read as well. All right, I have cut out my pattern pieces for the hood. As you can see, I have two pattern pieces over here from the main fabric, two pattern pieces from the lining, and two pattern pieces, each one on the fold of the middle part. But as you can see, the lining piece is smaller than the piece cut from the main fabric. And that is because I decided that I want to do a cut on facing. So if I place my pattern piece like this, you can see that it's definitely a lot larger over here. So I've decided that I want to do a facing that I can cut all in one piece in here on the bottom. I've aligned it as well. So if I leave it like that and if I take my lining and if I place it on top, you will see that now it forms a perfect little hood with a facing that is cut all as one piece. Now I usually don't do drawstrings in my hoods. Um, I'm not sure why I just don't, but I have this one. It's actually from my mom and it's a little sparkly. <laughs> um, and I think it's actually going to go really well with my project. So I thought, why not? And here you can see I've tested a couple of options for the opening for this drawstring and I've settled on a simple buttonhole. So once my hood is done, I'm going to attach it to the bodice by aligning the notches at the shoulders and 
again at the center back and of course overlapping the hood in the middle. step is the hem and it's super easy here. I have cut them out and I've also hemmed them right away and I will attach them in the round overlapping at the side seams. But you can see here there's a large hem allowance on the bodice and that's because those are those two inches that I've added and now I have to cut them off before I attach the hem. Well, there it is. <laughs> I think it turned out really nice. If I may say so myself, I do love this color combination. I do love how the sleeves and the hem turned out and the hood as well. It's sort of plain, but at the same time, it has a little bit of interest. Let me show you how it looks from a couple of different angles. I'm really happy about the color of the hood as well and the neckline on the inside is completely closed off So if you want to know how to finish your knit necklines in the most neat way possible I share with you four ways that I do it with a ton of real-life examples of hoodies and t-shirts and whatnot So take a look right over here. Thank you so much for watching push through your project Believe in yourself and until next time happy sewing. Bye